So Devin, hi, Lance Bailey from HealthySimulation.com. Nice to meet you, man. So uh, I hear you're part of the engineering team out of Sarasota, and you've been connected with uh, Medi before it was acquired by CE Healthcare. So you've got a lot of experience in terms of uh, Sarasota and, and working with uh, uh, mannequin manufacturing. But this, uh, from what we heard from Pam, is is next generation because we obviously were able to take all that CA healthcare, uh, excuse me, CA uh, aviation knowledge and engineering experience and kind of connect it to uh, the Medi team, which then obviously became CA Healthcare. So tell me a little bit about some of the amazing features that uh, your team has been able to develop. Okay, well, on behalf of the whole engineering team who worked so hard to get us to this point here into the home stretch. Right. Um, I'm, I'm really sure there's proud. many, many more folks than just you <laughs> involved in this process. Indeed, in our Montreal office and in our Sarasota office. And sure. I'm really proud to share with you some of the innovative things that we've, we've done. Um, technologically with this mannequin. So I'd like to talk to you first about some of the resuscitation capabilities. Okay, great. Um, from the airway on down. So this airway, um, we, we're confident is gonna revolutionize the industry. Um, we've got some new materials that are extremely soft and supple and extremely durable. We've achieved a jaw articulation that's unprecedented, a mouth opening, um, a neck articulation that articulates in two places so you can really bring that jaw forward. Um, Unlike other mannequins that, yes. have, that have been created in may, the past. May I? Please, yeah. Now she supports all the airway adjuncts. They all seal extremely well. We have a force sensor in the teeth with a carefully calibrated threshold for an auditory feedback for when you're putting too much pressure on those teeth. Yeah, and, and, and I can see from here, and we'll, we'll get a close-up on the camera in a moment, but just the, the level of realism in terms of the texture and detail inside the mouth is phenomenal, and I can definitely feel a lot greater range of motion in terms of that jaw, just as you mentioned. Um, speaking of the teeth, you know, one of the themes you'll see in this simulator is we're trying to get a lot of object, objective metrics about learner performance. So we want to collect as much data as we can, report it back to the instructor for debriefing purposes, and help tune the, the learner's performance. Um, so on that, on that note, uh, I'll talk to you a little bit about CPR metrics. Okay. We have now the ability to sense hand placement precisely on the chest wow. and independently measure depth of compression. Um, we're also able to compress a full two inches on this mannequin. Mm -hmm. um, our CPR analysis on the instructor interface provides the, the kind of simple metrics you'd expect, depth of compression, volume of ventilation, rate of compression, et cetera. But it also gives you a, um, a second level, the consistency of those maneuvers, how well am I doing compression after compression, Okay. and then metrics that really only CAE Healthcare can provide physiologically modeled generated metrics. Mm. So coronary perfusion pressure, cerebral perfusion pressure, and ultimately this is really what we're trying to drive, right, to improve patient condition. Absolutely, wow. So you've taken all that, the, uh, the, the core structure and beliefs of Medi and kind of incorporated them into the modern day technology. That's really f fantastic. To go further, we've, we've uh, created a new lung uh, a new very sophisticated lung on this simulator that supports mechanical ventilation in a way that really the industry hasn't seen since the, the Medi HPS simulator designed for anesthesia. So it's leak free. Wow. It has a realistically high compliance of about 75 or 80 of a typical ventilated patient. Okay. A nice low resistance, beautiful PV loops. And um, she even generates a negative inspiratory pressure, so she can trigger assisted ventilation like SINV. Okay, great. Wow, that definitely is uh, pushing the envelope in terms of, of, of that kind of performance. Okay, great. Let's keep moving down. Sure. So um, a shoulder dystocia is another thing. I mean, we, we really can't be exhaustive here because it would take us a very long time. But shoulder sure. dystocia is one of the key training needs, right? for uh, obstetric emergencies. Okay. And so we've, we've worked very hard to first of all present a very credible shoulder dystocia. The head can be delivered completely and the shoulder really jammed up behind that cubic. Okay. So you don't have a shoulder which is visible or palpable or where you can get your hand in there real easily. Wow. That's, that's not a shoulder dystocia. Right, right. right. And if, if you observe that in a patient, you probably would not diagnose that as a shoulder dystocia. Right. So we want to present that uh, realistically in the first place. And then we support every single maneuver um, in the management of shoulder dystocia. And we have uh, provided the ability to detect all of those maneuvers as well. So as Pam mentioned, articulation is a big deal for us. Um, we can do this, this great McRoberts maneuver, uh, uniquely provide a pelvic tilt and actual waist flexion and that's a sensed maneuver. So the simulator knows the relative orientation of all the body parts, and it knows when you've done McRoberts right. 
It knows when you've done supercubic pressure with sufficient force. It knows when you've performed a rotational maneuver to try to uh, manipulate the fetus and clear right. that shoulder, right. et cetera. And all these things are reported back to the instructor and they can trigger automatic resolution. So it can be a total hands-off experience for the instructor. Right, because it's so hard to be from the, you know, behind the two-way glass and know and see, you know, even through the cameras if you're in another room, whether or not that's being, that technique is being performed properly or not without having, you know, uh, confederates in the room who might be overseeing and watching, but then you're reducing the, the fidelity of the simulation so that the mannequin has the components inside to be able to recognize where or how the procedure is being done correctly or not correctly is, I think, a, a, a fantastic addition to, to this product especially. Is that all done with the same um, baby that we saw before, with the same... It is. Yep. That, that fetus supports uh, all of our different scenarios. Okay, great. So it's not like we're swapping out different uh, fetuses for different types of procedures. It's all developed in the, in the same fetus. That's right. And because of the way the fetus is gripped in that mechanism, we're able to provide you know uh, more realistic tactile and biomechanical realism. We don't have uh, artificial sockets or points on the mannequin. They're too hard because they need to support a mechanical cup. Right, and so it's not so much a specific uh, angle from one point, but the entire baby and fetus seems to be moving uh, with, from what I saw from that contraption. That's right, and the last point I'd like to make um, in, you know, on the topic of shoulder dystocia and also uh, on the theme of objective metrics is uh, traction measurement. So we are sensing the traction on the fetal neck, and not only can we report that back to the instructor so we know that the learners are applying wow. an appropriate level, wow. but we can actually use that to um, trigger the resolution. So if I choose as the instructor when I'm designing my content to have traction as an effective um, intervention for say a shoulder dystocia or an arrested labor, I can set the actual threshold at which I want that to be effective. Wow. And only when it senses that is it going to allow move for me. Yeah. Wow, fantastic. Great, great. Easy, easy.